Unit 3 Ways of Socializing Part A Reading Page 30 To attract someone's attention so that we might speak to that person, we can use either verbal or nonverbal forms of communication. Let us look at nonverbal communication in English. Probably the most common way of attracting someone's attention is by waving. For example, if we are at a noisy party and see a friend come in the door about 20 meters away, we might raise our hand and wave to her as a signal that we see her. But how hard can we wave in a situation like this? Suppose you are at the airport and you see your brother get off the plane and begin walking toward you. If you are excited, you might jump up and down and wave as hard as you can to attract his attention. This is the instance where big, obvious nonverbal signals are appropriate. There are, however, some social situations where smaller, nonverbal signals are more appropriate. In a restaurant, for example, if we want to attract the attention of our waiter, we have several choices. We can wait until he passes near us, catch his eye, and nod slightly to let him know we would like him to come to our table. Or we can raise our hand slightly to show that we need assistance. We do not whistle or clap our hands to get the person's attention. This is considered impolite and even rude. In most social situations where some informality is allowed, a brief raise of the hand and a small wave is fine. For instance, if you are walking across the schoolyard and see your teacher approaching you, a small friendly wave to attract his or her attention is appropriate. Once you've got your friend's attention, you shouldn't point at that person or thing you want her to look at. A slight nod will do. Pointing at someone is usually considered rude. Of course, there are times when pointing is perfectly acceptable, such as when a teacher wants to get someone's attention in class. The teacher often points to the student and says, David, would you read the next sentence, please? Pointing here is not impolite. It's simply a way to get someone's attention. Task 1. Linda Couple, a social worker, advises young people on how to use the telephone in their family. Listen to her talk and decide whether the statements are true or false. The Telephone. Potential Family Battleground. Hello everyone. In today's talk, I'm going to give you some pieces of advice on how to use the telephone in the most decent way so as to avoid unnecessary disagreements between you and members of your family. The telephone, as you know, is a marvelous instrument, but it may cause arguments between you and your parents. Arguments that could be easily avoided if you would sit down, talk it over, and agree to a few simple regulations. The most obvious problem, of course, is what everyone considers a reasonable length of time for a call. The exact duration must be worked out with your parents, but ten minutes should be an absolute maximum. That's certainly long enough to say almost anything in five different ways. And yet, it isn't so long that other members of the family will become angry. Even when your parents are out, the length of your call should be limited, be 
because they, or someone else, may be trying to reach your home for a very important reason. Calling hours should be agreed upon. If your parents object to your leaving the dinner table to take calls, tell your friends to avoid calling at that hour. If someone does phone, ask him to call back or offer to call him when dinner's over. A serious calling problem is calling very late at night or very early in the morning. This particular mistake is made mostly by young people who consider 10 or 11 p.m., when a lot of tired adults are happily sleeping, the shank of the evening. So please tell your friends not to call after 10 o'clock. The shock of waking out of a sound sleep and the fright of that instant thought, there's an accident, are enough to give your parents a heart attack. Weekend morning calls aren't so startling. But it's the one time your parents can sleep late. If your mother and father, out of kindness, have installed a separate phone for you, remember that you're still a member of the family. So try to stick to your family's regulations. That's all for my talk today. Thank you for listening. Task 2 Listen to part of Miss Linda Couples' talk again and write the missing words. Calling hours should be agreed upon. If your parents object to your leaving the dinner table to take calls, tell your friends to avoid calling at that hour. If someone does phone, ask him to call back or offer to call him when dinner's over. A serious calling problem is calling very late at night or very early in the morning. This particular mistake is made mostly by young people who consider 10 or 11 p.m., when a lot of tired adults are happily sleeping, the shank of the evening. So please tell your friends not to call after 10 o'clock. The shock of waking out of a sound sleep and the fright of that instant thought, there's an accident, are enough to give your parents a heart attack. Weekend morning calls aren't so startling, but it's the one time your parents can sleep late. If your mother and father, out of kindness, have installed a separate phone for you, remember that you're still a member of the family, so try to stick to your family's regulations. Part C. Listening. Page 34. Listen and repeat. Marvelous. Arguments. Regulations. Absolute. Maximum. Object. Installed. Chit-chat. Startling. Part E. Language Focus. Page 38. Pronunciation. Listen and repeat. Attract. Discuss. Suppose. Waving. Walking. Pointing. Signal. Instance. Student. Polite, police, between. Practice reading these sentences. Linda Couple is a social worker in my village. William Makepeace Thackeray was a famous British writer. David Warren is Linda's teacher's doctor. Janet is having a number of problems. Michael is sailing across the river. 
Jenny is waiting for Michael to return. Test Yourself A Page 41 Listening Listen to the passage about the changes in families in Western countries during the last two centuries and decide if the following statements are true or false. Families in the Western world have changed greatly during the last two centuries. Social scientists say that this change in the family is one of the important changes from a traditional society to a modern society. Before the 19th century, families usually arranged marriages for their children. Young people did not decide who they wanted to marry. After they got married, they usually had a lot of children. In the 19th century, most young people could not choose the person they wanted to marry. A marriage joined two people and not two families. Two people could get married because they loved each other, not just because their families wanted them to marry. At the same time, parents began to realize that they had to take very good care of their children. Before this, most people did not go to school. The family members all worked together at home. Later, people realized that education was necessary for a good life. Today, many parents think that they should have fewer children so they can give each one a good life. They think it is important for a mother and a father to spend as much time as possible with their children. They think parents should take care of their health and try to give them an education. Home is seen as a safe, warm place for all the family members.